In this video, we're going to learn about the types of experimental models in the standard. First of all, we need to know that an experimental model is an estimate of the probability that an event will occur, and this is calculated from trials. So our types of models, we've got tables, graphs, probability trees, and Venn diagrams. So most importantly, this is our formula here. The number of times the event has occurred divided by the total number of trials. This one shows the number of classes attended per week and how many of those students passed or failed the paper. So we'll start by finding these four probabilities. So the probability of attending four classes, we look up at our table and we can see that there's five plus two, which is our number of time an event occurs. And we divide this by the total, which is seven divided by 53, which equals 0 0.32. Now, if we find the probability of failing, we can look at the fail row in our table. And if we add all of these together, so 9 plus 0 plus 5 plus 2 plus 0, that will give us the number of events. And if we divide that by the total, we get 16 divided by 53. Now if we find the probability of attending more than three classes, given they have passed, we're going to look at the pass row and see how many of those were above three. So it's really important with this not to include the third column because the question wants us to find the probability of more than three classes not including three classes. So if we add 5 and 21 and divide by the total of those who passed, we get 26 divided by 37, which equals 0 0.702. Now for our last example, we're finding the probability of failing given the student went to less than four classes. So if we look at the failing row and identify those that are less than four, so 1, 2, and 3, we can add the events of failing, 9 plus 0 plus 5, and divide by the total number of fails, we get 14 divided by 16, which equals 0 0.875. Now if we look at graphs, we're going to find the probability of rolling a 2, rolling a 3 and a 4, and rolling a 1 or a 2. So if we start by the probability of rolling a 2, we can look up at the graph and dot the line back from the 2 column. So this equals 0 0.3. So this is pretty easy. You're just tracing back on the graph and reading the number off the graph. There's no calculation involved for this one. Now if we look at rolling a 3 and a 4, we start by tracing each one back and then we multiply these together. We multiply because it's an intersection. So we're saying what is the probability of rolling a 3 and then rolling a 4. So if we multiply 0 0.1 by 0 0.4, we get the probability is 0 0.04. Now if we look at the probability of rolling a 1 or 2, we start by tracing back again and then we add these together. We add these together because it's a union. So if we go 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3, we get 0 0.5. Now we'll look at probability trees. So this is our tree here. In the exam, they might give you a tree that looks very different to this, but you can apply the knowledge you learned from this video to the tree as it's the same concept. So we're gonna find the probability of Amy scoring or Stephanie missing and also the probability of Amy missing and Stephanie scoring. So to start off, we need to find the probability that Amy will get the ball, which is 0.7, and the probability then of her scoring, which is 0.2. So we multiply these together. 0.7 times 0.2 is 0.14. Now if we find the probability of Amy missing, we go 0.7 times 0.8, which equals 0.56. Now the probability of Stephanie getting the ball and scoring is 0 0.3 times 0 0.9, which equals 0 0.27. And the probability of Stephanie missing is going to be 0 0.3 times 0 0.1, which equals 0 0.03. But this hasn't answered our question yet. Remember, we're trying to find the probability of Amy scoring or Stephanie missing. So we're going to add these probabilities together. So 0 0.14 plus 0 0.03, which gives us 0 0.143. Now, if we look at the probability of Amy missing and Steph scoring, we know this is an intersection, so we've got to multiply the two probabilities together. So we go 0 0.56 multiplied by 0 0.27, which equals 0 0.151. Lastly, if we look at Venn diagrams, we're going to learn how to answer these questions. So we're going to find the probability that any student will take math, the probability they take Spanish or chemistry, and the probability they don't take chemistry. So if we start by finding the probability of taking maths, we look at the math circle here and we add all of the numbers in the circle and divide by the total number. So we go 85 plus 60 plus 15 plus 5 divided by the total, which equals 165 divided by 260, which equals 0 0.635. 
Now, if we find the probability of Spanish or chemistry, we're going to highlight these circles, but we're going to eliminate the intersection between Spanish and chemistry because the question wants us to find out the probability of Spanish or chemistry, not the combination of both. So we'll add the highlighted numbers together and divide by the total number. So 70 plus 17 plus 5 plus 60 divided by the total number, which equals 152 divided by 260, which gives us our final probability of 0.585. Now if we find the probability of not taking chemistry, we can cancel out that circle and add all the remaining numbers together and divide by the total. So the probability of not taking chemistry is 70 plus 5 plus 85 plus 5 divided by the total, which equals 152 divided by 260, which will give us our final probability of 0.584. So all you need to know for the standard is that there's four types of experimental models, tables, graphs, probability trees, and Venn diagrams. And you need to know how to calculate the experimental probability, which is the number of times an event has occurred divided by the total number of trials. If you know how to do all of this, then you'll do pretty well in your exams.